Well, welcome everybody. Now it seems to be the Vogue thing, as Hanadon said in his video, the Vogue thing to do a bench tour or walkabout or whatever you want to call it. Now the declaimer I'm going to throw in now is that I'm actually standing at my door outside. My work area isn't that big. It's eight by four. So we're going to have to do it in sections and I'll just put you on pause while I I move so I can show you things. Now to start off with, as we come right next to the door, as you can see the door frame here, uh, spray booth, uh, which is the best place to have it, very close for venting out. Uh, below that we have a compressor uh, and a space to put junk if I need to. Simple drawer underneath just to keep all my bits and pieces that I use for the spray booth within the two space house for you. Above that, uh, switches, controls for the fan and lights, which turns everything on, as you can see. Everything nice and handy. Then shelves, uh, the little blocks, uh, with the crocodile or alligator clips, put parts in. A nice large shelf just to put uh, bits that I'm working on. Then just more shelves with my rattle cans, because I do prefer my rattle cans uh, for priming. And that's it for this area. So I'm going to put you on pause and we'll move in a bit. Okay, now we've moved in a bit and we're at my bench. Uh, what can I say about my bench? It's a bench, it's a work area. Right, as... Uh, this room is so small and my bench area isn't that big. I uh, just devised a way that I can actually have pull out areas that I can actually work on when I'm not using them. They can be pushed away. Uh, as you can see, I like to be organised. I, I work in a mess, but I like everything to be at hand, you know, arm reach, so I can just reach out and get what I need. But I still do, I still work in a mess. Uh, tweezers, cutters, uh, pin vices, squares, uh, scalpels, I like my scalpels uh, of all different shapes and sizes, uh, files, spare blades, and that's basically my area, and the sought after Tamiya glue holder, which you have to be very special to get one. <laughs> And above that we have uh, glues, uh, well to be honest with you, it's the Tamiya glue, super glue, uh, uh, the ordinary Ravel glue which I find is pretty good for uh, tracks and things like that. Uh, I'm not too much into too many glues, I, I don't, uh, as long as they work that's the main thing. Uh, tapes, then just different bits and pieces that I need just to keep cotton wool buds. I like everything to be at hand, thinners, airbrush cleaners at the back, uh, other large hairspray and all bits and pieces like that. Then above that we have uh, a light panel, uh, so I've got good visibility right, when I switch it on. I've got good visibility and that's going to cause the camera to go uh, because I've got pretty poor eyes. So. That's my bench area, and also we've got the camera, uh, which is on like a little arm, which I can pull down, use, and put back. Simple as that. I will turn that light off because it's causing some flicker. Uh, then above that, uh, we have a selection. I'll have all my wires of all different thicknesses along the top, just so they're easy reach, so I don't have to go too far. And then above that we've got uh, the dioramas and other bits and pieces on shelves uh, that I'm actually working on. Uh, I shall get up. Uh, the light is seen, so I'll do it from that angle. So yeah, that's got all my uh, dioramas I'm building and in use and what I'm, what, what, whatever projects I'm doing. Then right above that uh, we've got a shelf, probably the shelf of doom. Uh, no, that's the motor torpedo boat. I'm waiting to get that sprayed up and finished off. Then moving along, we'll go along the top shelf there. 
it's just bits and pieces with jigs then coming into the corner this shelf just contains uh, clays stuff from my dioramas i've got to bolt of wood uh, paint brushes my wet palette bits and pieces like that and then oh, let's sit back down again because we are in a tight space so moving back down uh weathering products and paints well there's not a lot to say about them really uh, it's individual choice i think with the the products i find things work for me and then the same product don't work for another person it's just what you get on with uh i'm into vallejo the vallejo color i do like them i do like vallejo and also i do like ak uh, i use a lot of pigments i mix a lot of my own stuff uh, as you can see i mean i've got uh, my little grinder and things like that here so there's i haven't got no preference and being only back into modeling for what just about two years now i'm still quite a novice and I'm still experimenting with different bits and pieces and eventually I will find the perfect thing. So that's me. Uh, I'll switch the camera off then. That's my weathering stuff. Uh, then moving across here we have computer, uh, another webcam, uh, some books and bits and pieces. This is just basically computer area. Then below that we have a, another pull-out work area. Uh, this is where I do a lot of my scratch building, cutting, uh, just simply push back. Below that we have drawers and I'm not going to even attempt to open these drawers because I know <coughs> they're full uh, paperwork, uh, sprues, spares, bits and pieces like that. Right down to the bottom, all computer stuff, because I used to build computers a long time ago. And the same this side, these drawers, I shall get round one of these days to putting in proper sliders. Uh, spare glues, pegs, paints, batteries, stuff like that. Second drawer down, uh, mainly materials for scratch building. And the same with the bottom drawer, mainly stuff for scratch building. So that's that bit. Uh, computer underneath the bench, sewing machine. The sewing machine is very handy, you never know when one will come in useful. So that's the bottom half. Uh, above my computer, we have oh, uh, a selection of my old kits. Uh, there's a few going to go into the hobby room in the house. Uh, I'm one of them lucky people. I've got a big hobby room inside the house that I can put all my kits and everything. Uh, but I'm not going to take you around it today because I have my son. He's stopping for a few months uh, in between houses and moves. And the place looks like a tip. But I will do a link because I did do a quick looked at it very earlier on when i started building all the units and that i'll put a link at the end of the video and if you're interested you can have a little nose but as i say all these kits uh the trucks are waiting to go into my cabinet uh the other ones are very early kits uh waiting to be finished off and tidied up because i don't feel they're sort of respectable enough to go into my cabinet right at the top there is my tiger uh, 1 16th scale and this is my very first kit I ever built that actually got me back into modeling uh, so it, it sits up there as a reminder of all the things I did wrong <laughs> uh, on the side we've got just a few more kits uh, I think it's a Panzer 3 with a, a bridging unit another kit that I'm working on for a diorama and down here we've got the intercom, which is unplugged at the moment because every time I decide to do video in they buzz me for something. Then we've got uh, just a notice board. 
yeah, going up uh, I've got my little shelf that people send sent me bits and pieces I've got uh, a card there from Solomon which I've got to uh, send him one back very soon but uh, it's just getting things done uh, like I say a little flag there from John and a lighter there from John a uh, little sock puppet my granddaughter made me uh, to keep me company at night time so she said moving across we've got uh, a load of drawers these are all full of diorama bits grasses, stones soils, all things like that <coughs> then we've got uh, quite a few shelves with all my balsa wood because I do use a lot of balsa wood and that's where I store it all keep it all nice and safe now above that uh, I have me well it's not actually a stash no more it's just a, a, a good selection now of kits that I'm going to be building through the year uh, uh, the train that is for next year's project that's a big project for next year I've got uh, worked out but it's basically what I'm using at the moment uh, what I've built, bought for group builds uh, Steve Mottram's uh, uh, Golf War build. I've got Joe's T thirty four for his build. Uh, other bits and pieces uh, I've got in there. They're just builds for this year. Uh, I did have a big stash once upon a time, but I found it was money tied up, and I didn't have money then to actually buy things with. So I got rid of it and buy what I need, and I've still got. A few pence in the bank that I can actually call upon when I need it. So that is a very dodgy video of my workspace and as you can see my workspace also goes straight out into the garden which is really nice. I can still sit and talk to my young lady. Now I'm a very lucky person because I've actually got uh, three workspaces all together. Well tell a lie. I've got another workspace which is next door, which we're going to have a look at. And, and like I said earlier, I have a model hobby room uh, where I can display all my uh, kits and everything else on some nice shelves. Uh, like I say, I will, I probably will do that. Once my son moves out, I'll do a tour around there. But like I said, I'll stick a link in. You can just see the basics before I started uh, doing the work in there. But I shall put you on pause now and we'll go next door uh, to my other work area. Okay people, if we go directly out of this door and out into the bright light and literally turn and back again. And this is my other workspace. Now this workspace is just dedicated to uh, the moulds, doing my moulds, custom moulds. Uh, we have an area here just inside the door uh, to actually do all my casting. Uh, drawers full of uh, casting powder. Shelves underneath for... Uh, actually, there's, uh, my Road to the Wine sits underneath there at the moment. Uh, then above it is just storage spaces for all my bits and pieces. Uh, drying rack. And then we move along. Uh, we've got a camera there and also all my moulds which I've got quite a lot of them now uh, all shelved up uh, labelled up so I know what's what and if this area is just generally where I just keep basically my, my tools, my bits and pieces uh, larger items should I say and it's somewhere I can actually make a mess. A large hoover because it does get rather dirty and grubby in here. Uh, another drawer just full of goodies as I call them. Useful bits and pieces. Uh, another cupboard full of tools and bits and pieces are there. And that's basically it. That's my second work area. Uh, that one looks out onto the garden as well. And it's nice and bright in here. Uh, it gets very warm though in the summertime and a little bit chilly in the co in the winter time but hey ho that's the way it goes so that's it that's my little bench tour 
hope you enjoyed it uh, for those who are interested I will tag a video on for the third man cave uh, where I'll actually keep all my models and that and like I say my son is uh, there at the moment he's in between houses so I hopefully I'll be losing him in, a, in the next week or so I don't mean that I just mean you know I want my room back so that is it uh, thank you very much for joining me and uh, hopefully we'll see you next time.